The inaugural Plant Feature Symposium was held at UC Berkeley in January 2021. The virtual two-day conference, and also four-credit course, was attended by over 500 participants. The event gathered world-renowned experts from diverse disciplines to explore the significance of plant-based foods as a critical lever for food systems transformation. The themes of the conference embraced health, climate, entrepreneurship, systems thinking, and ethical leadership. Student participants had the opportunity to network with professional leaders and other guest learners throughout the event, fostering new connections and opportunities for applied learning and internships. 35 students were selected to participate in the two-unit innovation lab at UC Berkeley to work closely with leading entrepreneurial organizations in the plant-based food sector during the spring 2021 semester. Please enjoy some highlights from this year's conference. We should be looking at the confluence of what's best for people, best for the planet, and most ethical. No person of decent conscience should accept cruelty on the menu, and the simple fact is that the modern diet puts cruelty on the menu. We should all eat like the world depends on it. Food is supposed to be a vehicle for the delivery of nutrients and healthy forms of energy to our body. We didn't really understand much about the microbiome until fairly recently, and now we're starting to understand it and we're seeing these connections that are so incredibly powerful for human health and human physiology. And there's this special connection that exists between the plants in our diet and the microbes in our gut. And to me, this is the key to human health. Food is an opportunity for us to change our relationship, not only with our own health and the planet, but our relationship with all living beings with whom we share it. The real challenge for leadership isn't having the best product on the market, but growing the company as a healthy living organism while growing the technology and products. This is where you have to grow from being a founder and brilliant inventor to being a leader. It's very important that we understand the system dynamics of world building and how we create an emergent future. This takes two essential elements, imagination and will. And those just happen to be the same characteristics that entrepreneurs, you know, just are their basic DNA. So the union of entrepreneurship with systems change is absolutely an essential merit. I think transparency is a, has to be a fundamental value it, because it's food. Right. And so we, we are asking people um, to put things in their body. And that's a pretty sacred uh, request. So while there's an undeniable and growing interest in plant based diets, the consumption of meat is still rising globally, driven by population growth, urbanization and rising incomes in developing nations. As soon as people become rich, they want to eat like us, Westerners. So what this amounts to is that farmed animals, despite contributing about one fifth of global calories and one third of global protein, contribute the vast majority of greenhouse gas emissions and use the vast majority of land that food systems use. Farmed animals and their resource needs contribute about 16 percent of green, global greenhouse gas emission. And this is from the most recent numbers of the United Nations reflecting a base year of 2010. If we eat mostly plants due to that concept of ecological efficiency, we can grow everything we need using far less land. And it's interesting because through history, we've expanded our moral realm and our moral norms as we learn about the world. So today, things that are obvious to us were not so obvious to earlier generations. Because what happened to me is I began to get a symbiotic relationship with this young calf named Rowdy Girl. She began to show me distinctly that the cows out there in the pasture had lives of their own, that they appreciated their own lives, that they loved each other like family. Was when they were talking about veganism, they were ignoring the challenges that people outside of their scope might face. After watching all of these documentaries, even though they were great and I would even credit them for inspiring my work, I'm like, wow, they are all centered around white men. And even the people that they used to speak about the issues, they always, you know, older white men. And I'm like, if you keep marketing to the same group, then other populations are just going to completely miss the message. Plant breeders have access to incredible diversity as they are working and the potential to select for whatever we ask them to. But more often than not, they are asked to make improvements within a very rigid system of market commodity standards. As we think about regenerative agriculture, 
and the ways of eating and of growing that are going to sustain us into the future. Uh, and, and also the business opportunities to meet those demands. I think we have to think about and invest in the types of seeds and also the seed keepers who support that system. When we think about protein, um, plant protein and plant-based in the last five years, it's been incredible. It's for the first time, I believe, um, here in the U.S., we are making so-called plant-based food that actually tastes really, really good. And that is driving um, a lot of attention to it.